Kohn, he was appointed as a supervisor at Mysore Sugarcane Supervisor Company. And in the year 1994, he was appointed as a Chief Cane Development Officer at Panvapura Sakara Car Gain Limited. And in the year 1991, sir appointed as an assistant professor in the University of Agricultural Science. And in the year 2005, he was promoted as an associate professor. Finally, from 2011 onwards, he served as a professor in the same institute. And SAR has published more than 23 research articles in a various peer-reviewed reputed journals. With his busy schedule, SAR undergoes several training programs like techniques in microbial genetics and genetic analyzer sequencing and fragment analysis applications, international training program on molecular marker in crop improvement, and RNA interference as a tool for plant functional genomics and crop improvement, and so many other programs in Ragone training. And then he visited into various countries like Israel, Sweden, Nepal to deliver his research findings. And then SAR is actively act as a member in various academic bodies like Association of Microbiologists of India, Institute of Agricultural Technologies, South India Sugar Technologies Association, Biotechnologies Society of India, Indian Science Congress, Science, sorry, Society of Applied Biotechnology, and so many academic bodies. And he received various awards from our Indian government and also he acted as a principal investigator for several research projects funded by various research organizations of India. With this brief introduction, now I hand over the session to a resource person, Dr. Arini Kumar KM. Before going to start the session, I request all the participants kindly mute yourselves. Kindly don't interrupt the session. You can ask your queries at the end of the session or you can post your queries in the chat box. Now I hand over the session to Dr. Arini Kumar, sir. Kindly take over the session, sir. Thank you, uh, Gopala Krishnan, doctor. And yes, also sir. thank you for the, the team of for the university that given the opportunity to, to deliver the talk to you. And thank to the Science Academy and my below teacher, Dr. Bagheera, sir, and for giving this opportunity to deliver my lecture. And good morning to all the participants. Uh, now, yeah, okay, now I can share my PPT now. Visible? Yes, sir, you can. Yeah, it's clear, sir. It's visible now, sir. Yeah, visible. Okay, this is so yeah, nice. Visible. So, the role of biotechnology in crop production, that is my topic, actually. So, when you come to the agriculture sector, uh, the agriculture sector is around 75%. Now, this decreased to 60%. Of the people have agri profession mainly for the and also the farmers produce various crops starting from the maize, cotton, sorghum, and also the, the staple crop in India is uh, the paddy. Also, they're going the the large actor area cultivated for farming for to fill the need of Indian people because you know the population. But farmers carry to pose of farming with honesty and with lot of efforts. But still. There's a lot of constraints because of the nature has not given the support to the farmers because of the change in the climate, drought or excess heavy rain. I think recently you have seen there's a lot of rain occurring and mainly attack pests and insect and various diseases on the crops. Finally, because of the uh, loss of the crop, because he invested so much of money and to grow the crops, not able to achieve the uh, get the return out the, from this field. The farmers with the depth and under the attempted for this use. But this was a very uh, issue in case of cotton. So there is around 50 sprays, more than 30 to 40, or sometimes 50 sprays used to do control the bowl work, but we are not able to get back the cotton because of the bowl work infestation. And farmers making a suicide. And this is one of the paper newspaper uh, where actually there is a the death of farmer, they attempted for suicide and died. 
because of the depth uh, it is one of the reason so during that reason there has how to work the solution for this so this is the <coughs> uh, solution we can get it out of the biotechnology cultures uh, around 8 to 10000 years ago so when you come to the crop domestication there actually the farmers have been altering the genetic or makeup to grow the crops what they doing farmers select the best <coughs> looking plants and seeds and save them for the plant for the extension even my grandfather i used to see used to collect a good year out of a finger millet and collecting those seeds and next they keep it for the uh, sowing for the next season so that's the science of that was the previous history where the domestication of crop taken place genetic breeder later later on the genetic breeder used that the knowledge to develop improved variety with the desired traits yeah. so over the selection future the faster the growth uh, because of based on collective these are the criteria they used to select the crops based on the criteria like fast growth higher rate pest and disease resistance larger bees sweet fruits and the sweeter the fruits and dramatically change the domesticated plant species compared to their wild relatives initially thousands of years ago corn was found in the <laughs> today there are hundreds of corn varieties which having various sizes are available so i show the picture how the corn was looking earlier now what is the shape of that so the conventional methods of crop improvement that was the once in the long back maybe 1000 10000 years ago domestication take place maybe another 100 years ago the people start working on uh, conventional breeding as been method used to develop a new varieties of the crops for hundreds of years however the conventional plant breeding can no longer sustain the global demand what is the demand because there is increasing population decline in agriculture resources such as land and water the land mainly because of the urbanization water again because of the high population and and also various the changes in the climate condition and decreasing of the yield curve of the stable crops thus the new crop improvement technology should be developed and utilized so this how the pollination they doing artificial pollination and make the crop improvements there is a limitation in the conventional methods in this method of crop improvement hybrid varieties have a tremendous impact on agriculture productivity for the last decades were an extremely important tool the conventional plant breeding also has its limitation number one breeding can be done only between the two plants that can have a sexual mate with each other we cannot do behind the species within the species and the second one limit is a new to that can be added to those that already exist in the species species when the desirable plants are crossed many traits are transferred along with the trait of including trait with the non desirable characters undesirable effects on the yield potential also be one of the criteria the next come to the non conventional methods of crop improvement what they done in the over the last 50 years a field genetic engineering has developed rapidly due to the greater understanding of dna dna having a code from which genes are made the term genetic engineering is used to describe the process by which genetic makeup of organism can be altered using recombinant dna technology so probably this is the already all thought of it and how the recombinant dna technology has been done the for example in this case the dna from any species can be transferred so for example dna of human being can transfer to a microbe then they produce the vaccines uh, like the insulin so so many compounds can be produced by transferring the dna from human cell to bacteria this is possible only the recombinant dna technology which made lot of revolutionize in the field of agriculture and pharma the next to the integration of conventional and modern biotechnology methods of crop improvement so now there is a gmo there is a limitation and the bar there are lot of constraints go for gmo breeding in the country in the world wide people lot increasing so much but still with help of biotechnological methods we can do a lot of crop improvement that is called marker assisted selections or marker assisted breeding which help to get a lot of varieties 
I'll give one of the example, one of my students, the year 64, the rice variety, which is actually susceptible for the uh, neck blast. But today, because of the, their gene from the traditional varieties, which are having low yield, but high resistance for the neck blast, the genes have been transferred to the IR64. Now you have a variety that is going to try journal trial, so which can resist to the, the neck blast, IR64. It's one of the leading variety in the world, not only the country, it is in the world. So where actually this is the possible in case of um, modern biotechnology, where they are doing the back pressing and checking the whether gene is transferred or not. And also it's a very quick method compared to the conventional uh, breeding methods. So then when you come to that genetically modified, in so many countries, they already started and produce the genetically modified uh, plants. So we'll come back to what are the plants, how many plants have been developed so far. So this is the biotechnology actually, the mean actually is a cream of all the science. Biotechnology is not the new, but it's a cream of all the science. We're using the knowledge of molecular system. The living system can develop, make a useful product for the welfare of humankind. So any technological applications that uses biological system and living organism, they are big modified product or process of specific use. That is the definition for the biotechnology. How biotechnology play an important role in crop production? The wide concept of biotechnology enters a wide range of procedure for modifying living organism. What you have seen in the introduction, how we can modify. The, you, for example, in case of insulin production, it was a great revolutionized, and particularly for the country like developing country like India and other country where the people aren't able to afford for the purchase of insulin. But today they easily they can purchase because of this revolutionized in the biotechnology where we are producing the insulin in microbes. The so going back to the domestication of animals, cultivation of plants, and improvement to use this breeding program and diabetes. So the modern usage also includes your genetic engineering as well as cell and tissue culture. And uh, for thousands of years, humankind has used biotechnology in agriculture, food production and medicine, but not exactly knowing the technology. For example, the preparation of curds. It is known 2000 years ago for the farmers or the human beings, not the technology, but not exactly how the curd uh, milk is converted to the curd. So like that to wine productions or any fermentation, distillation, all the process have been earlier the practicing that is called old biotechnology era and new biotechnology era where you are understood the molecular mechanism and uh, DNA and gene and functioning and all the mechanism and also the tools for uh, transferring the gene from one organism to other. This is in a modern biotechnology. Uh, what is the, the needs actually? The traditional farming in early was just uh, uh, feeding the population that is existing that time. But when you go to the 2015, we have to feed another 2 billion populations. 2 billion population is not a small number. For the to feed this, we need, in addition to the production what we have today, we need 1 billion tons of cereals, plus 200 million tons of the livestock. So this was the demand for us. If you look at that, so it is not so easy to achieve. So how to achieve this? Otherwise, the people will die with the storage. No need to go any, any other way that there's a very easily they will store. But still in 1960, they started mechanism. This is what uh, the agricultural growth in, in India. And 1970, there's a green revolution took place where actually they developed some warp variety with high yielding varieties. And where the fertilizers and other things have also come to the picture during that time. Uh, that was the achievement you have done it. And now the demand for that, I think we need around, uh, this is the additional requirement for the for feeding the, the populations. So I told you in the beginning, uh, the domestication, this is actually, uh, do you look at that? This is a corn, what you call a corn or mage in the bottom. And this is called teosinate. This early stage, thousand years back, you, the mage looked like this, just a fingers, small fingers like that. This was the size. And domestication slowly developed and finally today we got this size of the major book. So this is the domestication you have done it. And next traditional breeding when you come to the uh, versus transgenic technology is a traditional plant breeding methods where actually not only this is the desired character, it may transfer and may not transfer. And sometimes 
some the entire part of the <coughs> desired and non desired character also transfer to the new variety so you may not get this is the traditional but when you come to the bat technology or transgenic plant technology this is the commercial variety it's already existing and now this gene is transferred to this new variety i gave an example of uh, revalidating a rejuvenation of the ir64 variety by this transgenic plant data this is the all of you know the gene concept the gene is nothing but a, a dna material with a sequence of 49 bone and 4 nucleotides segment encoded with specific protein that contribute to the expression of the, so the part of the gene will be expressed and will get mrna and get a protein then this a phenotype are the triad or the character the process is also called as converting dna to rna called transcription rna to protein called translation and expression and this how the message flow this is the message flow to get the protein or desired characters so how to transfer the gene from organism to organism there are different ways of that the one of the best method is called agrobacterium mediated so where actually this is the bacteria agrobacteria is a bacteria belong to family rhizobiaceae so the agrobacterium to be facing with a gene this is called a ta plasmid the ta plasmid can be can transfer the gene of interest to the da plasmid and this can be transferred this uh, you can make a culture of agrobacterium and mix with the tissue culture or the callus of the plant the desired what is the plant which plant it was then what happen because of this bacteria or capacity to infect and transfer this plasmid to a plant cell where the tissue plant cell so in this uh, where actually the gene of our interest transferred to the plant and finally this plant can be regenerated through the tissue culture technology we will get the plant come to that so this is another method is called gene bank so these are the gold beads the dna attached to the gold beads and then this is the dna they take in the dna and make the fragments of that and then with the help of the gene gun bombardment and this will be tissue will be there in the bottom the callus and when it because of the force of this uh, gold bead molecules and it's a high pressure with a vacuum pressure and also with high pressure when the bombardment taken place in the chamber and this will be ps into the tissue as one molecules ps into the tissue and insert into the gene and this is a plant uh, chromosome the gene is transferred then we select the uh, procedure for the tissue thought so then what happen after that you will select this plant the successful transformant where the plant with this transfer the gene where the actually gene also linked with some dna marker <coughs> marker gene may be antibiotic resistance or herbicide resistant so those when you put the herbicide and the in this media only the plant which having the antibiotic gene or herbicide resistant gene will grow in that so along with the gene of our interest so now you take this plant and make hardening and go to the field. so this is a total protocol the tissue culture this is a callus formation where the gene will be transferred then you can go different stage rooting and shooting and finally making into the small this is total procedure is called regeneration of the plants through the tissue culture when you come to the global area biotech so this is how the genetic engineering we have the technology now transfer the gene and you could come to that what is the improvement made in uh, in genetic engineering so maybe you started in 1996 and 2006 around this during this period so much of area under bt cotton or maybe other crops like any crops with herbicide resistance or stacked triad means the more than one triads the insect resistance or maybe or with there are so many triads which are included here so maybe nutritional traits or something that is called stack traits so the stack traits is increasing time the earlier used to have only one either herbicide or the insect resistant now they want to combine both herbicide and insecticide and they are getting the stack so look at that there is no even a small land with a uh, 1996 with uh, genetically modified crops today we are reached around 75.4 billion hectares of the plant with the stack hectares of the herbicide resistance and insect resistance is around 25 
So this is an achievement made over from 96, 1996 to the uh, 2060, around 20 years is the outbreak. And uh, if you come to the total approved transgenic uh, plant events from 92 to 2016, there is around 4004 genetically modified events in the database has been. And uh, this is uh, these are the crops. If we come to the mage, is the major one. The next is the cotton. Then we have a canola. Uh, the quality of oil have been improved here. And soybean, herbicide resistance, and other characters. And potato. And uh, coronation is actually, there's a different beautiful colors in the coronation flowers. And rose they have. Uh, petunia is another one. And there's a lot of uh, uh, crops like apple, plum, melon, sweet peppers, papaya, squash, poplar, and eucalyptus tree. These two are the tree. And tomato one is another one. Uh, to enhance the self life of the tomato. So another, another uh, 11 events and 11 characters or triads has been transferred here. So then there's a bean. In, there are seven characters in case of rice. And sugar beet tree. And eggplant, this are actually, this is also done in uh, India. There's nothing but uh, uh, brinjal. Now it is grown very widely in uh, West Bengal, but not allowed to release in this. And flax and follies, canola, another variety of that. And apart from the alpha alpha is actually a good uh, a fodder crop uh, for the, uh, particularly the grown, it's a legume plant actually, uh, with the less lignin content, they reduce the lignin content in this crop. This is so many events than this, so many characters are retired, has been modified around four and four events have been modified. And this is a uh, 356 events in the crop, three events in the tree, and 22 events in the fruits, around 23 events in the ornamental, including flower. So this is an achievement made and increasing the crop. Uh, again, viruses causes or UV loss in India particularly. So it has been or more than 1,000 crores per year. Just imagine the amount which are incurring loss in India. So that is mainly because of among me, yellow mosaic viruses. Uh, that is a cotton leaf curl, sunflower, necrosis, tomato leaf curl is also another major, banana bunchy top, and citrus decline. So this is, these are the wild diseases which causes more than 1,000 rupees loss to the farmer. And what are the different... Uh, uh, triads are the characters which can be used for the uh, crop improvement. The one is the insect resistant. Very typical example is the BT cotton, where it is the, the cotton is resistant to the bold box. That is called the virus resistant. An example uh, is the papaya and herbicide resistant soybean. Male sterility is mainly in case of mage. Drought tolerance is also in case of mage and salinity in case of paddy. And delayed ripening in case of tomato, biofortification in case of. So these are the triad have been the characters have been transferred to the various crops, and sometimes it's a more than one that is called stacked one. So more than one character, some herbicide resistance, even salinity. So like that, this also been done in most of the crop. This is an incidence of the BT cotton resistance technology has been transferred. So you know the bacillus thuringiensis is a a bacteria, soil bacteria, the gene which is uh, called Bt gene, which is transferred, taken and transferred to the crop. When the crop fed by this worm, they die because of the change in the gut pH. The gut pH is changed and then the crop will be done. So this was done in case of corn mainly and also in case of cotton. So many crops have been used. Uh, this is a Bt. The mode of actions, Bt cotton, the Bt uh, pro actually the gene bacillus thuringiensis gene which produces the protein when it is uh, ingested by the larva uh, of the target insect. The Bt protein is activated in the guts alkaline condition and punctures the the bush borders membrane of the mid gut by binding to the this substance. Then insect dies within a few days because of the inability to eat food and die with due to the starvation. So Bt cotton. The success story of Bt cotton in India. Cotton is a very important crop. All of you wearing, I think today you are wearing the cotton is mainly blended with other uh, red also like the woolen or hairy cotton, whatever. But uh, cotton made a revolutionize in the industry, particularly the textile. 
So there is a 30% of its uh, agricultural GDP. When BT Cartin was approved, commercial plant in 2002, the ball work infestation was suppressed. And in 2014, India topped the BT cotton production. Before 2014, you used to import cotton from other countries. Now you are exporting. That is planted at 11.6 million hectares, was, which was done one third of world cotton. Because you know the introduction, I told you the cotton BT, cotton growers was suffered. And sometimes there is a suicide after in a month. There is a more than eight farmers died because of the BT, uh, because of the, the cotton production. The advantage of BT cotton, the improved pest management, reduction in the pesticide use, it is around uh, from the 50 spray to come down to the four sprays, the greater net returns because of no damage and the quality of cotton good and the improvement also there, there's no damage in the whole world, an improved condition for the non-target organisms. So this is the BT cotton event, provide built up protection into cotton against lepidopter and pest. Significantly reduce the number of sprays for the gold bombs. Larger yield saving leading to the improved production. Additional benefit to the farmers from 1.24 euro to 200 per acre after deducting the decreased cost of the seed production. And white and clear cotton. Otherwise, seed production was more, uh, BT cotton seed was more costlier than the normal uh, uh, cotton seeds. So this is the non-BT, how the infestation takes place, and this is called BT. Reduce the risk of uh, cotton growing and provide significant health and environmental benefit safety. So this is 6.6 .6 million farmers in China and another 7.7 .7 million farmers in India planted more than 15 million hectares of BT cotton in 2015. So now you have independent, so this is a car cotton industry in India. Next, virus resistance in the plant. Apart there is a pest resistance. The transgenic approach is the virus is of two types of that. The one is called pathogen derived resistance and another one is non-pathogen derived resistance support. In case of PDR, this is called PDR, pathogen genomic sequence are deliberately engineered into the host of the plant gene. In case of non-PDR flows, the antibodies to the viruses or virus protein are various mutations incorporated into the wall. So there's two ways of modifying the plant. There's a transgenic plant for of course the viral disease resistant. This is one of the example virus is a plant utilized so far. And the plant commercialized so far in Western countries. By law, this is the same virus transgenic. The same was this is the virus affected uh, papaya plant. And yellow, this also applied to the other plant like squash and jichini is another uh, uh, cold temperate crop and uh, resistant to the uh, YME and watermelon mosaic to viruses. Also, these are the way they are used the uh, cowpea mosaic viruses and papaya and also the resistant to PRSV. That is, uh, these are the varieties. And potato also, they are used this uh, virus resistance in potato. And the new variety is called new leaf. Then next is the herbicide tolerance. So when you grow crop, the weeds are the main competitor for the nutrients, water, and the space. So the weeds compete, and sometimes it take 60 to 80 percent loss to the farmers, not properly managed. The unwanted plant growing where it is not required. That is called weed definition. The farmers can fight weed with the tillage. And weeding, herbicide, typically a combination of all techniques. Researcher postulated that the weed management could be simplified by spraying a single broad spectrum herbicide for the field anytime during the So now earlier the people used to go for the, uh, the physical way of uh, weeding. And weeding was so laborious, and even tillage also reduced the crop, making some crop damage. But uh, with the invention of this herbicide. There's a lot of implementing the crop growth. So for that, they have taken the, uh, the compound name, glyphosate. Glyphosate is a kills plants by blocking the EPS synthesized enzyme. The tolerant plant can be produced by the overexpression of <coughs> EPSPS. 
calcification of the herbicide using a single gene from a farm. The contain this uh, gly glyphosinate herbicide contain the active ingredient like phosphoenolates, which kills plants by blocking the glutamate synthase enzyme. The tolerance strategy involves here inactivation of phosphoenolates by the addition of a cell group brought about by bore gene at the plant. So they are grown in the name of the, now the people are being round up heard about this uh, the weed side and liberty link another uh, weed side crop in many parts of the world roundup is a very famous uh, weed side even only the herbicide the gene which already transferred to the plant which can survive and without affected by this uh, glyphosate weed sites or uh, the commonly uh, the trade name is called roundup so this is a uh, the plant with herbicide resistant gene and plant without a normal plant. So where the, the weed side is sprayed on that, when the moment you spray it, the plant is killed, but here they're not killed because of the herbicide resistant. The excellent weed control ends higher crop. When weed is controlled, it will not compete, compete for the nutrients and also water. Then crop grow very well. Flexibility possible to control weeds later in the plant's growth. Reduce number of space in a season. Reduce soil compaction because of the less need to go and on the hand spray or machine spray in that. The use of low toxicity compound which do not remain active in the soil. And use of no-till or conservation uh, tilling system. Intercultivation not required in this. The next one of the another event is called genetic male sterility. That is a transgenic. So that is uh, called the bornase or bastor system is a good example of transgenic genetic mastility. It's excellent RNAs and uh, borsar is an inhibitor of bornase. The bornase bastor genes are expressed under TA and TA29 promoters. Plants contain 29, TA29 bornase construct are called male steri. Those with TA29 bastor are not affected by the bornase enzyme. The bornase gene have been linked with the body specifically resistant to the phosphoenthesis. This again, the, uh, another way of controlling the. So this is the uh, flow diagram, uh, how there has been taken place. The transgenic has been done for the male sterility. The bornase gene, which are transferred and uh, taken from the bacillus amylo, uh, lipifacins is a bacteria, uh, mainly uh, affect on the food industry and the gene has been transferred and then transferred to the, the system. This is called, they developed the Barnes Buster system. This system has been transferred to the plant. Uh, the particular, they have taken the pollen as a source and this is transferred to that. So finally, we can, this one is regenerated, tapeticum, which is uh, regenerated. And finally, we get a pollen become sterile. So this is the way you can get a male sterile plants. And we developed of that. It also helped for the development of hybrid, particularly Dara mustard hybrids, which is genetically modified portion of the mustard. So this is the two crops. So we actually you can see the mustard, which can be resistant. This is a normal, and this is the genetically modified. Next, transgenic genetic male sterility is also another notable hormone in use called the TRGMS system. The BCPN is called again bacillus compostis. Is the bacteria knee and where it is linked to the hormone inducible and answer sequence. Advantage of this transgenic genetic male sterility, easy maintenance of male sterile lines and easy elimination of male fertile plants from the male sterile plant and efficient fertility restore system. This is, called, this is one of the important uh, efficient fertility restorer system which is very useful in case of production of hybrid. So probably all of you know today we have a lot of hybrids where it is in case of sunflower or maize in so many crops but even in case of rice we have a hybrid have more yielding compared to the varieties. The next is the drought tolerance. This is another event. Uh, the functional genome of course can play a major role <coughs> in studying the QTLs identified for biotic, abiotic stress and identifying the scores of it is complementing the breeding techniques. The genetic manipulation of the stress response to the abyssic acid, and this is the gene involved, ERA1, is called 
Arab diopsis gene found in a novel in FBA signaling. And another way is called FBA independent gene regulation of gout register. So this is another uh, transcription factor and gene involved in that and expression. The next character or event is salinity versus tolerance. So when you come to the salinity concept, uh, there's an increase in the, the land area for under the salinity is increasing. There's a lot of land because of the over uh, irrigation, the land becomes saline. So that area is now increasing every day, every year in India. So now you have to think on how to grow the crops in saline. So for that, again, there are genes involved in that will be transferred to the crop. So these are saline tolerant crop grown in that and saline susceptible crops which died because of the high salinity. And this is the uh, field situation where you have the variety with sag eating. So that's how the crop can grow and survive where without this gene, they are dying. So this is how the saline resistance crop. The next one is delayed ripening technology. Is actually the gene which is called FLR sever, flower sever is called the transgenic tomato increases the self life because of antigens cloning of polygalactonase enzyme is involved here. And here we thought this enzyme this is a normal variety which white type look, this uh, self life is very. So, in this case, the fruit ripening is an active process that in the climate, uh, climatic fruits such as tomatoes. Characterized by a burst of respiration, ethylene production softening, change in the color, flavor, undesirable, particularly during the For that, these are the gene product and the function through the how they can do the function and what is the role in ripening. The phytonin synthase, lycophene synthesis, that's really this enzyme synthesize this product, lycophene, and this lead to the red color. And polygalactonase pectin methylase, which degrade the cell wall, then the fruit becomes softening. And ACS oxidase and ACS synthase, which is ethylene formation, the ripening will be degraded. So we can stop this with the help of the enzyme called flavor 7. And finally, we can increase the self life of it. Look at the transgenic tomato with the resistance to the leaf curl viruses. So this is the plant, non, and this is the transgenic. So we can get a more read. And this is the one of the uh, done, this work is done in Kenya Spanish National Research Council. Tomato plants have been increased resistance toward the Tuta absoluta insect plague. You know, the insect plague is also decreased in this case. Advantage. A student's top quality foods and vegetables are the more. The widening of market opportunities for farm. Reduced in four star response. Extension in the cell. These are the advantages of this technology. The DR technology has been applied for use in tomatoes, even in case of melons and papaya. It was also used in carnation for delaying withering of flowers. The flower self life has been increased because of this technology. And again, how to do this? Uh, this is the technology plant tissue culture, is a technique growing plant cell tissue organs in artificial media. And then we can go SFT condition and finally look at the flowers. These are the different color for sure. And go to the next one is somoclonal variation. So this is also production of plant leaves by callus regeneration, cell suspension culture, protoplast culture, present some deviation with regard to the mother plant. So changes to the you can change, you can see the look of the changes in the water plant, mother plant, and also. Coming. This is the way to increase the genetic variability. And 1976, this thickness has been used in case of uh, <coughs> Pelargonium, where the cultivar variety is called rose, was created by this technique. They can create the colors of the rose. So, uh, blue color rose can be developed. Like there, there's different colors on that. The application of this somoclonal variation, uh, this is actually a somoclonal variation. You, you have to create a variation within the mother plant. Then you'll get a, the subsequent plant rate or a different in their character. The improvement of existing clonal cultures. So one of the example in case of the sugarcane variety, Septara, parent, Ono, and Pushan is another variety in case of mustard and Varuna in case of castor. The potatoes yield 
and disease resistance can be done. As an example, is in case of three species, and improve the geranium and enhance the, the smell of the perfume of the geranium. And woody ornament also they have done the selection of leaf for variegation. So these are the uh, application of smoke layer. The next one uh, recently this is called bio fortification. So now the people think of that, not the quality or the quantity of the food, it's the quality of the plants. I'll give an example. The people now earlier you think of only the quantity of plants. Today we'll never bother about the quantity. Now you have to look into the niche generation, you have to look into the only the quality of the food, of the food rather than the plant. So during my visit to uh, Korea, South Korea, when you're interacting with the the scientists, uh, particularly the rice uh, breeders. So when I told them there is a lot of uh, hybrid variety have been developed in India, particularly there is a Karnataka hybrid varieties are there. There are a lot of varieties which has grown throughout the world. And I told why can't you can take and do them? Then they said, no, no. Our uh, earlier the people used to eat more rice. Now the people think of using less rice because of the the side effect. Diabetic and so many diseases. So now the people reduce the rice consumption and they want to increase more on vegetables. And also, the quality of rice is important for them. Earlier, they used to use the around 40 kg uh, per annum. This was rice consumption per head for man. Now it is come to the around less than uh, 4 kg. So that was the, uh, the given the importance. Now the people are given for the given rice. So because South country, particularly, we are using a lot of rice. So when you start with, I think, you know, when you start with the breakfast, either dosa, idli, whatever, it is a part of your rice. In the afternoon, we have a rice, rasam, again, curd rice, whatever you are using, the right rice. No, the future, now my request is the all young generation or the teachers who are here, please, can you, can you, can also take the things on that, and think and go for the quality food rather than the quantity. The combating white, so one is the increase the protein content. Uh, this is one case of rice. And now, now a lot of people in my lab also working on the, the protein content in the rice. They have developed some tra traditional varieties which are rich in rice. Like the people using the traditional variety which are rich in the protein. Now, in case of cassava, they want to increase the rice because it's also stable food in African country. And golden rice expressing phytins, in case of phytin, D naturalist, contain rich in vitamin A. Iron rich crops, again, is taking anima, anemia, can be done. This also be done in case of rice and other crops. Uh, this is the increased folic acid in tomato and phytase in case of that. Again, omega 3 oil, again, a good for health, omega 3 oil producing plants. The anthocyanin producing tomato, this is called again. Uh, reactive oxygen species. I think this is the one which uh, uh, minimize the damage to the our capillaries. So this is how that uh, people are uh, thinking on quality of fruits. That is called bio. This is the golden rice. How it is uh, developed? We can develop this uh, uh, where it is. This is the uh, normal rice. So, Partially modified, 8 microgram per of rice. This is a 25 gram. And if you look at this page, you can read this book. This is a time the rice could save millions of people. Because in Asian continent, the people have suffered with a disease, for particular eye diseases, and lose their sight because of the lack of vitamin E. And that can be done. So this is a non-transgenic endosperm embryo. And this is a transgenic, very rich in the iron rich, high yielding indica rice content. Now the people already screened so many iron rich and also the Indian rice lines is 32, 25 microgram gram rice produced by the feeding and ready for feed test. The lines with the 16 microgram are throw them to be 50% of RDS. The BT Brinjal, again, the success story, all of you know. In India, they have done a lot of work on that. They released, but not released in India because of the uh, issue uh, with the right? And this is the BT cotton. Oh, the, sorry, BT brinjal. Look at the yield. 
how much it is almost more than the hundred percent increase in the heat. And it is a BT brinjal, it is a non BT. And also, again, within that, you can see the worms and others, but not able to see in this case. The uh, yeah, network list update on uh, the status of agriculture biotechnology in Bangladesh. According to the report, biotech research has been advancing moderately in Bangladesh, particularly in several crops, with the support from policymakers, regulators, and development. But in India, due to this lack of this, we were not able to release the BT brinjal. But the BT brinjal, which is developed in India, now grown very widely in case of Bangladesh. Bangladesh. So this is another uh, the uh, CRISPR technology. So now when there is a lot of constraints and also regulation in transgenic, the people thought of gene editing. That is called CRISPR technology use in advocate uh, within the plant system they can modify the dew points. A non transgenic drought tolerant gene edited corn they develop. This is a drought tolerant gene edited crop. Now it can be uh, without any regulation, it can be released to the system. What is CRISPR Cas? Actually, it's a derived from a natural process found in bacteria to protect themselves from the pathogen. The technology, the immunity or maybe a defense mechanism, the target gene for editing and regulating. And comparable to the Photoshop. So it can pick a target gene can be modified. So this is how the genomic DNA and machining genomic sequences. And this is how the guide RNA will be there. This is called Cas9, CRISPR Cas9. So this is how this unit is called protein unit, which can modify the gene system, whether it can be used for that. Actually, CRISPR means the cluster regularly into spaced. Short palomary repeats, which are on the DNA loci containing short repetitions of base sequences, which separated by short space of DNA from previous exposures to a virus plasma. Thus, they are the Cas gene and later repeated spaces. The simplified diagram of the CRISPR locus there are three major components of CRISPR locus are Cas gene and a later sequence and a repeat spacer array this is called a Cas gene, a later sequence, and repeated space. And this is a DNA fragment. Repeats are shown as a gray box. This is a gray box. And spacer are colored. These are the spacer are colored. And bars. In addition, several CRISPR with a similar sequence can be present in a single genome, only one of which should be associated with the Cas. So these uh, systems are developed. The genome again, uh, editing CRISPR Cas9 systems are engineered uh, versions of the Cas9 protein on guide RNA. Typically, they are identified to, identical to the streptus, Streptococcus phyogenes. All of you know that uh, Streptococcus phyogenes, which is responsible for the pimples on your skin, uh, particularly youth. The type 2 CRISPR system expect that a single guide RNA is used to place a complementary CRRNAs and tracer. RNAs of the natural CRISPR system. S9 protein is a codon optimized for the cell intended to transfer with the CRISPR. For example, CRISPR Cas9 expression plasmid used to edit the genome of human cell have a codon optimized for human cell and this is all called humanized or Cas9. This is called uh, for human being, this is called HS9. So like that, we have a, I think when you start, they say this is one of the, the genome editing is a new art. Topic. So, if you read and you can see a lot of videos, go to website and check mechanism of the Cas9 genome has been done. The first one is assembly of CRISPR complex. This is a Cas9 protein, and this is the target specific uh, chromosomal DNA RNA sequences. This is called guide RNA, and this is a loop. This is a go to that, and associated with the target DNA, the CRISPR complex is associated. And this is the one target DNA. Now it is modified. The induction of the double strand breaks. They make some breaks on with the FAM sequences and insertion of donor DNA. And finally, this is the clear. There's a donor DNA is inserted here. So look at that. This is how gene edited. So the gene is edited through this technology. This is just a brief diagram. You can look at a lot of video on that. 
the first CRISPR headed mushroom received in a green light from the US government. This is the, this is the first uh, green light from the US government. See this uh, mushroom developed in the green light. Next variety of Camelina that's gene addicted to increase the oil content. Camelina again temperate crop grown for oil, grown without undergoing the USD regulatory process by that time. So people can directly release without any regulatory process. The gene editing is one of the advantages. Yes. To come to the conclusion of that, the contribution of biotech of the food security, sustainability, and the the first one is increase crop productivity, more affordable food, reduce the production cost, and you can get the food at a cheaper price. The conserve next one is that you can go for conserve the biodiversity. When you grow more crop or more, you can get a more yield in a unit area, one no need to get an extended land area. Then whatever the, the biodiversity is there in that land cannot be done. It's called land saving technology. The prevent the deforestation. This is one of the main problem. All of you know that deforestation is the major problem in India also. People have the land area under the forest. Is, land area in the forest is, is decreased. Actually, it's come to less than uh, uh, 15 percent. So supposed to be about 30 30 percent, but it is less than that. You know, this land area is prevent. So when you go for biotech crop because you are getting more area, more production in unit area, then reduces the agriculture's eco footprint, lower pesticides. Probably you know the DDT, but still it is in the life cycle. And also next in one, it decreases the carbon dioxide emissions. The next helps to mitigate climate change, <clears throat> reduce the greenhouse gases, again savings on fossil-based biofuels. Now again, to get the biofuel is another criteria is very important. I'm going to deliver the talk on fuel, how the biotechnology helps for the improvement in the production of biofuels, and then can for the regulations. The contribution to elevation of poverty and hunger, the better livelihood from the higher yields, as farmers to earn more reasonable income in a safe unit of India. So one of the example is BT Biotech Cotton has made a significant contribution to the incomes of 16.5 million poor farmers and their families in India, China, Pakistan, Brazil, Argentina, and also Burma, Mexico, Sudan, Paraguay, and South Africa. So this is the one of the uh, achievement and advantages of that. And these are some of the example of the transgenic and also the controlled musk melon. And this is also musk melons. We have transformed musk melon with the rabies glycophotin that is also possible. That work is done in our lab. Dr. P. H. Ramayana Goda sir is done and still yet to release this one. And these are the seeds of transgenic crops. This is the work done in musk melon and all for safe food and safer. So what you do, the technology is the one which help for the getting a quality food. And also, uh, you have a lot of benefit I told in the previous slide. And when you have a food, you look at that, the hunger is the main enemy for human being. If you have hunger, you cannot tolerate. You can tolerate for one day, two day. After that, how you can do that? The people can even rob it and kill the other people to get the food. So that will be the situation in future when we will not take care of the food security. And apart from food security, the biotechnology helps for it. Food not only food security, it is also feed security and fodder for animals. And also it solves the fuels. And also it now is solved, already solved the fiber. Fiber and food is have been solved. There are five F important the important for in our human life. The two has been already sold. Another three has to be sold. We are requirement in that. So thank you so much. I will thank to all the organizers and this team, uh, particularly uh, the team which helped me for the, uh, deliver this lecture. Thank you. Now over to organizer. If you have any questions, participants. Thank you. Dear participants. Krishna, sir. Sir, sir, am I audible? Yeah. Am I audible, sir? Okay. Yes, yes, please. There is a question. Yeah. 
So there is a bonus. There's a question. So I look up for the box. Question box. Yeah, okay. Now, any questions? So I go with the... There are two questions from Bhuvanesh. Does it cause any harmful effect if you consume BT engineer edible for vegetables and green grass? So you take an example of brinjal. Brinjal has around 320 proteins in this composition. Even non-BT brinjal, some of the proteins are allergic. Even in case of bread, you are eating bread, you are eating rice, even milk as a protein which allergic to that. But it is not the issue for all of us. But in general, the BT actually it is a protein which is affect only the intestine of alkaline, not the acidic. Human uh, uh, intestine or the stomach is acidic pH, will never harm anything. And you know, India also consuming indirectly some VT brinjal probably. You are also taking uh, uh, the transgenic crops, either through maize or the powder, whatever the flakes you are eating, that is also there. That the people in America and other countries, more than uh, 300 countries which are already using BT or uh, the uh, transgenic crop, then nothing is happening. Hello? Sir, sir next question is, I think, your brief about yes, please. Fortified, food, food, fortified food items like yeah. golden rice and other things. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, golden rice have been developed in case of uh, uh, Varaisa Japanica. You know the rice, uh, there are two important rice varieties. One is Varaisa Japanica, Varaisa Indica. Indica is non-stick variety. The Varaisa Japanica is sticky variety. It is grown very widely in China, Korea and Japan. Because you know the people, they will eat through the sticks. The sticks need, the rice should addition to that. They have developed in that variety. So they are using it to the extent. But this, that has been not been done in case of uh, indica because of the you know the lot of constraints are there. <coughs> People cannot be able to in India. There's a lot of regulation not allowed. Even brinjal is not allowed. Cotton allowed after long protect everything because they are not eating. Finally, they allowed only the BT cotton is allowed to grow in India, but not even brinjal. Brinjal developed by us, but now they are growing very widely in China in other countries. So this was the current rise, but uh, the day will come when the shortage of food, the policy maker or politician over maybe, they have to accept, otherwise we cannot get the food for the Indian papers. Sir, so actually our question is, is there any research about anti antibiotic incorporated food items? Hello? Yeah. Is there any research about antibiotic? No, no, earlier people are using the antibiotic as a marker gene. Now, instead of that, they're using other uh, uh, markers, which is not antibiotic. Okay. It's only to find out that's all. Now, the people now change it. The marker gene has been changed now. They will use only non-commercial, non-food crops. But not in case of uh, food crops, they are not using antibiotic marker genes. Another, you, what you said is exactly correct. Using marker gene may have a side effect. So, that's why they removed it. Okay. So next question is, how the glyphosates would inhibit the growth of plants? And what are the demerits of somoclonal, sorry, somoclonal antibodies? And glycophosphate is actually it's a compound which is need to be degraded. So whereas, whereas in the transgenic crop, if you transfer the gene, it produces the enzyme and uh, inactivate the glycophosphate. So that's why the glycophosphate may not, not be active against the, the crops, but it's active only against the non-transgenic crops. The transgenic plant have a gene which produce the enzyme, which can be degraded and it make the weed uh, uh, inactive. When it is degraded, it may be degraded. It's, it's called the enzyme is called EPS synthase enzyme. That is there in case of overexpression of EPS synthase enzyme, it is there in the transplant. So that's how it is can kill the uh, uh, effect of the glycophosphate will be nullified by the transgenic cross. Okay. 
so another question raised from participant is whether the bt method control all kinds of insects or control no not them? all time that's why we need two or three sprays bt cotton is only for the particularly for the bachelor uh, bowl worm not for sometimes there are trips there are mites which may be very minor pest so that has to be controlled is bt yes. cause any side effects sir? no side effect i told you no the bt the protein which are produced it may be there in the system it can be just it will be that when you taken this food inside your stomach because our stomach is acidic stomach it will be inactivated the protein which actually is a protein is not a chemical compound it affect only in the worm gut region because most of the larvae have alkaline ph it change the ph of the larvae so that's the reason why it kill the larvae yes sir Sir, Dr. Prabhu has kindly explained about a long-term study about genetic engineering crops. Yes. Sir, another one person, Dr. Prabhu has kindly explained about a long-term study about genetic engineering crops. No, this is all. People have done a lot of work. Otherwise, we never get so many crops. I think I have listed so many genetically modified crops. And the grown in a variety of wide varieties in case of China, America, Australia, even UK, they are growing a lot of crops which are genetically modified. So they studied very thoroughly the impact of each one they studied and no side effects so far. No, no side effects. So they are grown very widely the genetically modified mage also. Mage is one of the more, most stable crops for the human cell or particular. Right. So, yes. Sir, next one is, if you transfer your genes to any affected plants, it takes yes. how much time to cure the plant? If you transfer your affected plant, no, no, no. We cannot transfer the affected plant. Once it's affected, no, the system has been changed. The plant will be killed or cannot give a yield also. But here, no, you have to grow. You have to transfer the gene during the seeding stage itself. It is already transferred before the. putting a seed to the soil before start growing the seed gene already there in the system you cannot transfer the plant which uh, already affected by the insect and pest the next question is any hazards using genetically modified no no so far no hazards have been done so for example i take an example brinja I told you, brinjal is allergic to some people. Maybe people eaten the bitty brinjal or apple brinjal is same effect for him. But uh, people have given mis propaganda. But so far, the people I have I have discussed with one of the scientists uh, who is Indian origin from America. He has worked in America for long time. Then they are telling more than twenty years they are using genetically modified crops food. But still no hazards. So far they are not find any hazards. Okay, that's all, sir. Any more questions from the participants, sir? Okay, sir. Thank you very much for your elaborate information about various uses of biotechnology in the improvement of crop. Thank you, Gopal Krishna, Doctor Gopal Krishna, and drug tolerance and other. Doctor Niyas. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you very much for your presentation. You can uh, start early, little early, because I have another meeting with the secretary. Uh, that is actually three three o'clock. You told, or maybe late. Which one is preference for that? Okay. Sir, we will inform. Yeah, please. So maybe a better. I think I'll go on back to office, or otherwise I'll complete and go. If you permit okay, me, do it early. It's a better. I think before. Yes, give an appointment. Sir, next ten to fifteen minutes will inform you, sir. Yeah, please. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. You. Okay, sir. Better Thank you. Better we can come right and go. Otherwise, what's the government? We don't know what is the time we can come back. Oh, okay, Doctor Gopal. Yes, sir. Sir, shall we wind up? Yeah, One second. Okay.
थैंक यू कर्म गया था फोन dear participants you can leave now kindly join the next session exactly at 130 pm sir any other information i have to yes sir